this video, we're going to go over classical conditioning. Classical conditioning is the learning process by which an unconditioned stimulus is paired with a conditioned or neutral stimulus. There are a number of terms here that you need to be familiar with for the exam. First, the unconditioned stimulus produces the unconditioned response. We use the term unconditioned here because this is innate or a reflex. It does not have to be learned or acquired. An example of an unconditioned stimulus is an air puff to the eye. If you deliver an air puff to the eye of an animal, the animal will automatically blink. The blink is the unconditioned response and it occurs without any training or learning process at all. Next, we can talk about the condition or neutral stimulus. This is a stimulus that has no effect on the animal. So that's why it's called neutral. It's not a good thing, it's not a bad thing, it has no effect on the animal. So what the researchers will do is they will pair the unconditioned stimulus with the condition or neutral stimulus. And over multiple pairings, they find that by presenting the condition or neutral stimulus alone, they are able to produce a conditioned response. So the conditioned response has to be learned, so we see that it is acquired through classical conditioning. Another important thing to note is that this conditioned response is less permanent than the unconditioned response. And it's actually possible to eliminate the conditioned response over time through a process called extinguishment or extinction, which we'll discuss on the next slide. So let's look at an example of classical conditioning. And we'll look at the most famous example, which of course is with Pavlov's dog. So as you can see with this diagram on the right, the unconditioned stimulus is food. So when food is presented to a dog, the dog will salivate as the unconditioned response. And here, the neutral or the conditioned stimulus is gonna be the ringing of a bell. Initially, this neutral stimulus has no effect on the dog, so the dog does not have any response to the ringing of the bell. When you pair the ringing of the bell to the unconditioned stimulus, meaning that when you present the food to the dog, you also ring the bell, the dog is going to salivate in response to the presence of the unconditioned stimulus food. However, over multiple pairings, what you can do is you can present the bell alone as the conditioned stimulus, and you're able to elicit the conditioned response, salivation in dogs, without the unconditioned stimulus. So here, the conditioning has been complete, and the conditioned stimulus can elicit the conditioned response. Okay. So next, let's talk about a few additional terms. Acquisition, extinction, and spontaneous recovery. Acquisition refers to the process when the condition or neutral stimulus is paired with the unconditioned stimulus. So this is when the animal is learning to associate the conditioned stimulus with the unconditioned stimulus. Now, when you present both stimuli together, you're going to get a response because of the presence of the unconditioned stimulus. So to test for this acquisition, you can present the conditioned stimulus alone in between the trials and see how much of a conditioned response you get. So as you can see in this diagram, initially there is not much of a conditioned response when you present the conditioned stimulus alone. However, over time as you do this pairing, presenting both stimuli at the same time, in these test trials where you present the conditioned stimulus alone, you start to be able to produce the conditioned response. Next, we have extinction. Extinction occurs when you present the conditioned stimulus alone without the unconditioned stimulus. So without the unconditioned stimulus, the animal will have the conditioned response at first, but over time as it learns that the unconditioned stimulus is not going to come with the conditioned stimulus, the response is going to become weaker and weaker and weaker until the conditioned stimulus can no longer pr produce the conditioned response. So finally, we can talk about spontaneous recovery. So after this first extinction process, the conditioned stimulus can no longer produce a conditioned response. But if you give the animal a break or a rest period, what you will find is that if you present the conditioned stimulus, you will suddenly get the conditioned response again. And this is called spontaneous recovery. And similarly, if you don't pair the conditioned stimulus with 
of the unconditioned stimulus, the conditioned response is going to extinguish. So you're going to lose that response. One thing to note is that the response magnitude of the spontaneous recovery is going to be weaker than the conditioned response after acquisition. So you can see here, after acquisition, the response magnitude was large. With a spontaneous recovery, the response is not as strong. It is weaker. Okay. So next, we can talk about generalization. So generalization refers to the idea that when you do classical conditioning, the conditioned stimulus is able to elicit a conditioned response. As it turns out, if you have stimuli that are similar to the conditioned stimulus, the, the similar stimuli may also elicit the conditioned response. So we can look at an example of fear conditioning in rodents. So the unconditioned stimulus is a foot shock, and the unconditioned response is freezing behavior. So this is innate. If you give a rodent a foot shock, they will automatically freeze. Here, our condition, our neutral stimulus, is a 10 kilohertz tone, and animals haven't heard this tone on a regular basis, so when you present this tone, the animal isn't going to respond. It is neutral. It does not produce any effects on the animal. If you pair this condition or neutral stimulus with the foot shock, over time, if you present this 10 kilohertz tone alone, the animal is going to exhibit freezing behavior. However, if you present a similar stimulus, such as another tone of sound, a 16 kilohertz tone, instead of a 10 kilohertz tone, you'll find that the 16 kilohertz tone may also be able to produce the freezing behavior, the conditioned response. So this is generalization, when similar stimuli can also elicit the conditioned response with the conditioned stimulus. Our last term is discrimination. Discrimination is effectively the opposite of generalization. This occurs when only the condition or neutral stimulus can elicit the conditioned response and similar stimuli cannot. So in the case of fear conditioning in rodents, if you present the 10 kilohertz tone and the rodents exhibit freezing behavior, and if you present the 16 kilohertz tone and the animal does not exhibit the freezing behavior, then we say that the rodents are able to discriminate between these two stimuli. So again, this is occurring when the rodent is responding with the conditioned response to only the conditioned stimulus, and the similar stimuli do not produce a conditioned response. Okay, so that's classical conditioning.